Hey, what's going on everybody? It's your bro. Hope you're doing well. And in this video, we're going to run some tests on both array lists and linked lists in Java. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. All right, let's begin. We'll need both a linked list and an array list. So linked list, the data type will be integers, and I will name this linked list equals new linked list. Again, the data type is integer. Add a constructor. Boom, we got ourselves a linked list. And now we'll need an array list. Change linked to array. This will be named array list. Make sure to pay attention to the capitalization. Equals new array list. And we'll need to keep track of the time. We'll need a start time, end time, and elapse time. And these will be of the long data type. We'll be working with nanoseconds, so a long is preferable to an int. A long is really just a really long integer. Think of it that way. So we have start time, end time, and elapse time. Okay, and now we'll need to populate both our linked list and our array list, and we can do that with a for loop. We'll need a large sample size, maybe 1 million elements. That'll be good. So int i equals 0. We'll continue this as long as i is less than a million. And I believe that's about a million. Yeah, we're good. Okay, then increment i by 1 during each iteration. So I'm going to add i to both my linked list and my array list. So we can add primitives because Java has an autoboxing feature. So even though these are integer objects, we can still add primitives. And be sure to add to our array list as well. So array list dot add i. Okay, let's move on. Now we'll keep track of the time. We'll need to assign the start time of value and end time of value before and after our operation. So let's say that start time equals, and we can get the current time of our JVM by using system dot nano time method. And let's take a look. So this returns the current value of the running Java virtual machines time source in nanoseconds. So we will get the start time after we do something. I'll just add a note here, do something, then we will get the end time. So end time equals system dot nano time method. And to calculate the elapsed time, that will be elapsed time equals end time minus start time. And then we'll probably want to display this. So let's do that. System.out.println. And let's say linked list. I'll add a tab to plus elapsed time plus NS for nanoseconds. And let's just run this to test it. So this portion of code really took, right between here, took 400 nanoseconds. Okay, let's actually do something now. So let's get the first element within our linked list. Linked list dot get zero. And let's see how long this takes. Okay, 13,200 nanoseconds. Now with an array list, let's copy everything that we have for our linked list and change linked list to array list. And be sure to do that here as well. Array list. And let's compare these. So we are getting the index of zero for both our linked list and array list, and we will compare them. And it appears that our array list is slightly faster. Our linked list took 11,800 nanoseconds, and our array list took 6,700. So it looks like getting the first element of our linked list is going to be a little bit slower than our array list. This time, let's get something right in the middle of our linked list and array list. So I'm going to turn this line to a comment and we will get the index of 500,000. So that's right in the middle and do the same thing with array list as well. So array list dot get 500,000. And let's see how long this takes. Okay, so our linked list took way longer than our array list. Our linked list took 7.5 million nanoseconds compared to our array list's 6,900 nanoseconds. Okay, so that's still way longer with a linked list. Now let's try something near the end of our linked list and array list. What about the last element? Linked list, die get 999,999. So that is the last index in our linked list and array list. We have 1 million elements and this is exclusive and the first element has an index of zero. So let's do the same thing with ArrayList. ArrayList.get 
999,999. And here are the results. Our linked list took 63,000 nanoseconds compared to our array list's 17,000. Now the reason that our linked list took less time to retrieve and index at the end is because this linked list is a doubly linked list, so we can begin at the head and work our way towards the tail, or begin at the tail and work our way backwards to the head. So since this index is right at the end, it's actually going to be very easy to retrieve this index, whereas in the middle is actually going to be the worst possible spot for a linked list, because we can start at either end, but it's still going to take the same amount of time to get to the middle. So it appears that accessing an element from an array list is always faster than a linked list, and that's to be expected because with an array list we have random access of elements. Unlike with a linked list, we have to begin at one end of our linked list and traverse our linked list until we get to the index that we're looking for. Now let's add or remove an element from our linked list and array list. Maybe just remove because it's going to take really the same amount of time. So linked list dot remove. And let's remove the first element. So index zero and do the same thing with array list. Array list dot remove index zero. And let's take a look again. Okay, so it appears that our linked list was actually faster this time. 17,000 nanoseconds compared to 2.2 million nanoseconds of an array list. And the reason that our array list took longer is because we need to shift all elements to the left after removing an element. So we had to shift 1 million elements after removing the first element. Now let's remove something near the middle. So let's remove index number 500,000. So linked list dot remove 500,000 and do the same thing with array list. Be sure to comment this line out. Array list dot remove 500,000. And here are the results. So it looks like our linked list took a lot longer this time. 7 million nanoseconds compared to 1.6 million nanoseconds for an array list. So with our array list, there were less elements to shift this time because we were right in the middle. But with our linked list, we still had to navigate to the middle to remove one of these elements. And then let's remove the element at the end of both our linked list and our array list. Linked list dot remove 999,999 and do the same thing with array list. Array list dot remove 999,999. And this time our linked list is just slightly slower than our array list. Adding or removing elements near the end of an array list is actually fairly easy. The closer that we insert or delete near the end, the less time it's going to take because we have to shift less elements. And with a linked list, well, this is a doubly linked list, so accessing the last element doesn't really take too long. If it's near the middle, it's going to take forever, actually. So it seems that in most situations, an array list is going to be better than a linked list. However, if you have to do a lot of inserting or deleting, especially if it's a large data set, a linked list might be better, but it seems that an array list is going to be more flexible for most applications. So that is linked lists versus array lists. If you would like a copy of all this code, I will post this to the comment section down below. And well, yeah, that's linked lists versus array lists in computer science.